mic check, please. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ducks Limit Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Jennings. I'm your host, Dr. Mike Brazier. My name is John Gordon. I'll be your host. And I'm your host, Katie Burke. Welcome to the Ducks Unlimited Podcast, the only podcast about all things waterfowl. From hunting insights to science-based discussions about ducks, geese, and issues affecting waterfowl and wetlands conservation in North America, we bring the resource to you, the DU Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ducks Limited Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Jennings. Joining me in studio today, once again, a, a continuing guest of the uh, Ducks Unlimited Podcast, Jim Ronquist with Drake Waterfowl. Jim, welcome back to the show. Man, thanks for being here. Appreciate the invite. Yeah, no, I mean, this is great. It's the perfect time of year to talk about some of the things that we're going to talk about today. Um, I am. We're in the, the middle of finishing our new guns and gear issue, our July-August issue, which will be coming out very soon. Uh, some of you may have already seen it. So, what we're going to talk about here today is, you know, Drake's got a bunch of new products out, you know, exciting stuff, some different changes, some cool things. But before we get to that, and we'll get to that, and that'll be the the real, uh, you know, nuts and bolts of this conversation. First, I want to ask you, how was your duck season last year? That's a great question. There's lots of people asking, and I'm uh, instead of just saying fair, I'm going to say this. It wasn't great. It certainly wasn't bad. I give it a fair overall to a good for us yeah. maybe leaning more towards fair but somewhere in that area if that makes any sense we had some really good days had some bad days too but that's <laughs> duck hunt you yeah. know that's why they call it hunting instead of killing right that's right um but it, it you know there's always room for it to be better and my standards may be a little high i bet yeah um yeah i'll be honest that's on a, the same answer that i've gotten from a hundred different people that i've asked you know and not one person has said it was the worst season they've ever had not one person said it was the best season they ever had. So it's just everything in, in between. And that doesn't just go from like the Mid-South region as well. I mean, that was, you know, Chesapeake Bay area. You know, I think out West, they had some super weird weather, you know, water coming and going. It was real odd for some of them. Um, but yeah, it's been all across the board. And it was the exact same for me. It wasn't my best, it wasn't my worst, but it was, you know, it was pretty good for me just in the sense that we were able to capitalize on the specs. When we when we didn't mm. have the ducks, we had specs. So. Well, it was good enough to make me want to go back again this year. That's right. That's all it takes is just a little bit of a, a tease there. You know, and that's funny. We talk about that a lot at my place. We always finish the season really strong. Mm. You know, the last week of the season for us, for some reason where we are, um, we we seem to do pretty well. Mm -hmm. And we always joke around that that's just enough for us to come back every season, to be fired up, be ready to go. So That kind of goes along with when I was in the guide business and folks book, you wanted, wanted folks to book a three-day hunt. Because hopefully in that three-day time period, you at least get them on a decent hunt. Mm -hmm. And it, preferably, it's, if it's going to be bad, let it be bad the middle day. The first day, okay. If the second day is a little off, but the third day, you get them pretty good, they leave with a good taste in their mouth. No different than you said about duck season. If yeah. the last few days are pretty good, that's what you remember. So that, so now that's a lesson for all guides out there. You kind of sandbag the first two days, just a couple ducks here and there, and then the third day, you put them on the good spot, right? Put them on a good spot. <laughs> that's awesome. That sounds like something a fishing guide would do, too. Yes, sir. So before we get into more of the kind of the technical gear that you guys have coming out, I want to talk with you because I think last time you were in here was, it would have been... Uh, other than I think the duck numbers thing, and we, but we had you on early in the summer last year, and we kind of talked about when you started with Drake. It wasn't too long after. I think that is right. So how's that transition been for you? I think our audience is familiar enough with you and in your hit past. How's that transition been for you? Just going, you know, from Rich and Tone to Drake. You know, now now you're dealing with turkey and deer and all kinds of stuff so it, that, that's that been pretty cool it has been of course my other passion my other hunting passion i like to hunt everything but my other hunting passion is turkey hunting in the spring so i that was kind of a natural piece for me but it's been a, a quite a big change it's a good question you know when i was at r&t and still great friends there still got to rock and r there so it's, that's not an issue but it it is a, I hate to say bigger playing field because it's the same group of folks, but there is more, a little bit more to it. Um, seem to have a little bit more on my plate as far as different aspects mm -hmm. of the business. Um, and I catch myself having to back up and regroup, be a be better organization. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the certified smart people out there are real good at that. 
I've always flown by the seat of my pants. So it's kind of made me have to do things a little better. Um, but it's been fun to be not only involved with duck calls, but the apparel side and, and trying to realize what people like and what works and then offering some of my input from being in the field with the product design folks on, hey, what about this idea? What about that idea? And then learning what's practical and what isn't. Mm -hmm. And that's probably some of the the behind-the-scenes stuff that we've never thought of. You know, as duck hunters go, man, why can't somebody do blah, blah? So in that position, hey, why can't we do this? Well, here's why. Yeah. You know, um, there's the production aspect, and you got to ship it, and you got to get it paid for, and you got to keep the price here, and blah, blah, blah. It's just way different, but it's fun. I enjoy being a part of it. Yeah, I bet there's a lot of ideas out there that just get shot down in some of these meetings where it's just like, we just can't ship it, you know, like that just can't do it. It's not even feasible from a price point. Right, and that the economics of it there, you know, what what are folks willing to do? And there's always somebody it's willing to go way high, mm-hmm. and there's other people who always want to stay down low. So you got to find that ground that fits your niche. Yeah, and that's you know that's kind of the interesting thing, which is cool and exciting about this conversation is I, you know, I do all the gear editorial for mm-hmm. the magazine and online and things like that, and I get a lot of stuff, and I get to see a lot of products, hear about everything that's new and the latest and greatest, and there's some wild products out there. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, there's some wild stuff that I think a lot of people have never even seen or heard of, but you know. The cool part about this is, you know, we get to see it not only from a partnership standpoint um, with Drake, but, you know, we kind of get a a, a sneak peek on some of the new products that you guys are coming out with Mm -hmm. every year. I know last year you guys sent us a bunch of new stuff um, around the office. It's like Christmas morning. You know, we get to get this big box and we start. What's in it? Yeah, our photo editor, John Hoff, and I start digging through like, what's this? Oh, this is cool, cool, cooler or, you know, whatever it might be. But it's it's, it's a really unique opportunity for us. And and I know I appreciate that, that you guys. I send it. Um, but today we can talk about, you know, what's new for 2023. Mm. And a lot of people are going to see a lot of this in the magazine very soon. Um, but, you know, I think it's a good opportunity to be able to talk through some of this and, and see some of the things that not see, but really explain some of the things that you guys have new and the direction that Drake's going. So cool deal. I'm excited about a lot of the new stuff coming this fall and, and fall 23. 20- 425. And that's the other thing I should say too, before I get into that. One of the things I learned separate from being in the duck call business is we could come up with an idea and we could shape a tone board and not go hunt with it, blow it, or John and I would blow on it. Every, here, blow this. What do you think? And you could have a new product pretty quickly mm-hmm. and, and bring it to market, you know, at least through the shop or whatever. With us in the apparel business, you may get the idea now, then you've got to get it drawn and designed properly. Then you got to get it built. Then you got to have some samples. Then you got to get it sized. Then you need to field test it and make sure everything works and stays together. So you're, if you can get something out in a year, and I've only been here just a touch over a year. So the a lot of stuff won't you won't see some this year, but next year you'll mm-hmm. see more. So the it's time, like stuff that you were involved with, yeah, yeah. And, and, and some of it you'll see some this year, kind of on the back end of things. But that being said, there's a big time frame time you. The ideation of it, mm-hmm. it's a new word I've learned. Yeah, I like it. Ideation. Uh, once I, you, that's done, and then you get it designed and built, prototyped, and then fit sampled and changes made, you're sometimes the best two years before you can offer that product to the general yeah. public. So that's been kind of a big learning curve of mine. I yeah, like, and, and the exciting part is some of these new things for 2023 you talked about earlier, those things are already shipping to you guys and to potential vendors now. Correct. They're at least getting on our way to us yeah. now or shortly will be. You cool. know, we're getting a little past that COVID supply chain issue. There's still some of that out there. Mm-hmm. We struggled with it last year, but that's starting to get better. So I think everybody will be able to ship better this yeah. summer. Yeah, and I think everyone dealt with that for, you know, at least two years. Right. That, so that was, you know, every, pretty much every manufacturer I talked to because we were trying to get, we like to get the product in hand. I give it over to our creative team. They shoot the images for the new guns and gear issue. We like to have all those products in hand. Well, um, you know, there was a while that we didn't get anything. And that was a, a lot to do with, you know, couldn't get things off docks, couldn't get them out of different areas, different countries. You know, there was there was a real mess. So uh, I think you guys are not unique in that manner, but it's good to hear that it's starting to clear up. Mm, it's getting better. Yeah. It, it's certainly getting better. Uh, my, but I think everybody's dealing with it. Yeah, figuring a way around it at right. least. So just to get it started, you know, one of the, 
most exciting new products that you guys have or your new waiters. Mm-hmm. Um, those will be featured in the magazine, obviously, but let's get into the details of yeah. what you guys changed with your your waiters. That was one of my big things coming over to, to Drake mm-hmm. was waiters. Yeah. You know, when you're in a everyday duck season pretty much and then traveling and all the stuff that we get to do, you appreciate a pair of waiters that one holds up and two stays together, um, keeps you dry and warm and comfortable. So that was a big part of of coming on so the updates for fall 23 they're not quite brand new to the t-zip but man it's big improvement one of my best things that i got to say about them is the boots Mm -hmm. newly redesigned boots lighter more comfortable um i got to wear them some last duck season super warm super comfortable um we also got that same new boot on our hip boots I was moving a floating blind yesterday, so I got to use them, wear them, walk in and walking in mud. They're just so much better to me than the old boots. Um, they're going to be warm. They're going to be comfortable. They're Again, they feel almost like wearing a tennis shoe, but mm-hmm. I said almost. You yeah. know, um, they're still a pair of boots, right? Oh, yeah. But just so cool. That that improvement alone is huge. Um, the T-zip part of the zip waiter. We made that zipper longer mm-hmm. based on some of the other waiter manufacturers. We made that longer just to, it just makes it easier when Mother Nature calls. Oh, yeah. You know, you don't have to make as many, it, it's not quite as difficult. Inside hand warmer pockets, outside hand warmer pockets, outside shell pockets, that stuff doesn't fall out of. Yeah. Just those changes alone are huge. A little better shoulder strap, a little better waist strap. Um, just really trying to improve the general fit feel and finish of the current T-Zip waiter. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm excited to see how folks are going to like those. And uh, are, are you guys going to come out with those that will be insulated or all breathables? These are all breathables. Okay. Um, I believe there is going to be some SMUs that may be insulated, but for the most part, okay. uninsulated. One of the other things, too, is our sizing is going to be different. So instead of slim, regular, big, they're going to be sized more similar to your jacket size. Yeah. So, you know, medium, large, extra large, 2X, 3X, okay. and and short, regular, and tall. Yeah. So that's just going to make the fit way better for everybody. It just I think folks are going to enjoy that so much more that they can buy a pair of waders that's going to fit, and you can adjust however. You know, some guys like to wear their insulated jacket underneath their waders. Yeah. Some folks like to wear it on the outside. I want to be able to do both. So yeah. it's a little snug when I put Something warm underneath that is fine. Yeah. I typically am a vest guy underneath it and a uh, waterproof, windproof jacket on the outside. But yeah. I think folks are really going to appreciate the new waiter and then them warm, fuzzy inside the top yeah. of you. Where, where do you typically put your hands when oh, you're yeah. wearing a pair of waders when ducks ain't flying? Right here. Either right there or I yep. stick them down inside the front and pour them little hand warmer pockets right there. Sweet. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the same way. I always keep my hands here. But, you know, one thing that you got you talked about earlier as well is the straps. You guys change the straps a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. The, the material and the elasticity of it's mm-hmm. going to be a little different. I think folks will appreciate that more. You can have them too stiff, Yeah, I think, but oh, you can yeah. also have them too loose. Yeah. You know, if it's too floppy and they won't hold up, that's no good either. But at the same time, you want to, if you need to pull them down a little bit, you want to be able to do that. Yeah. So you, and you don't want them to hang. You know, if you catch <laughs> yeah. a limb, you don't want them to yank you out the boat. Either. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a jacket in, inside my waders until it starts raining. And then you got to have your jacket you outside. Have or, you know, you have, you have to have it both ways. You know, what's funny. A lot of folks don't think about that, but that's a recipe for getting wet oh, right yeah. there. Yeah. I've seen people do it a hundred times. If where, it, you can have all the waterproof good stuff on you want, you put your waterproof jacket inside your waders, it's going to run right down your waterproof jacket and get your feet wet. Right into your feet. That's you right. Well, yeah. It'll end up at your feet, let's say that. It's and gonna it's going to be cold. Along with everything else along the way. That's right. Kind of moving on with some some new products. You know, another thing that goes along with this is, um, with, with those waders, is you guys came out with some Merino Wool McAllister underlayers. You bet. Fantastic. I mean, and everyone is kind of shifting, it seems like, to these uninsulated, wa- breathable waders. Mm-hmm. And what comes along with that, with me anyway, is being cold when I'm hunting the timber. Like, I, I better be prepared. Correct. And so, like, I see now I'm starting to see companies come out with these, you know, different wool, you know, underlayers that are absolutely fantastic. And for me, a must, you know, mm-hmm. uh, especially if you go up north and you're hunting in those same waders, you need those underlayers, but it makes it, makes your day so much more comfortable. Is that kind of where you guys came with that is like, you saw a need there and, and you just filled yes, the hole. And I, I think that's what a lot of other folks are also doing. Uh, if you spend a lot of time hunting in the woods, say you're hunting 
you know, White River bottoms late in the year, you're dealing with some colder water. Um, so if you just got your breathable waders on, your legs are likely to get cold. In fact, if you're in, say, thigh to waist deep water, when that water pressure, at least for me, gets around them thighs pretty good, mm -hmm. it just sucks the heat out of you. Yeah. So a layering system that includes merino wool, um, maybe some fleece lined pants, maybe even a little heavier um, outer bib or waiter pant over top of that, and you don't feel the water. Yet, let's back up into mid September teal season, and you need a pair of waders for, for every hunt, and not hip boots. You don't want to have to put all that stuff underneath it, so you want those waders to breathe so you can be cooler. So that gives you an opportunity to have one pair of waders to get you through the whole season. Yeah. No, that's great, and um, we're going to run through several more products, uh, some of the new stuff, and it, it'll be it'll be awesome. Uh, let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with uh, Jim Ronquist from Drake Waterfowl. Uh, Jim, we kind of touched on the waders, and mm -hmm. then we made a little quick transition into the McAllister underlayers. Just they're one of my favorites. But you guys also come out with an MST Ultimate Waiter bib this mm -hmm. fall. You know that's a cool product. It really goes perfectly in line with what we were talking about the uninsulated breathable waders on those cold days when the ducks aren't flying i know my legs next thing you know you realize your legs start shaking a little bit in the water not bad adds a little motion in the water but you know you don't want to be shivering out there no you want to be comfortable you know part of part of the pursuit of wild fowl is to have fun and be comfortable while you're doing it and that'll make you more successful you know we talked about how to layer up underneath these everybody doing these breathable waders the ultimate waiter bib there's something everybody's going to enjoy I can see some bow hunters maybe also appreciating that because they're so yep. quiet, they're fleece, they're warm. Uh, that over your base layers or that over a mid layer, um, it's going to have to be really cold water before you get cold. Yeah. Because um, yeah, I, I just don't see it happening. They're they're super for what we're talking about for a layering layering piece. Maybe even if you're wear them under your bibs. Um, goose hunting if you're hunting layout blind or something like that yep. um, put your uninsulated waterproof bibs on over top of them you'll be even more comfortable you know shedding that wind shedding the water yeah. where you don't necessarily need waders but those bibs along with the fleece waiter bib combined will keep you warm and dry cool yeah, and then, you know, you guys also have the LST, the new LST jacket and vest. Uh, you mentioned both of those are, are some of your favorite Man, products that you guys the, are coming out with. With and, the double down fabric, the new face fabric on mm -hmm. those, those became my go-tos last year. And if it really got bad, I'd, I would put one of our windproof, waterproof shells over the top of it. Yep. But the... The outside fabric, instead of the shiny looking, it might be camouflage, but we've all seen it. I don't know the proper name of the material, but it's kind of got a shiny nylon mm -hmm. look to it. It snags really bad. Yep. This stuff is really satin. It's got kind of a light canvas feel to it. Yeah. Um, it doesn't shine, doesn't sheen. It hides good. Um, just general briars will kind of roll off of it pretty good, yet it's not really stiff and noisy. Um, those two combine together, the vest and the jacket. I wear the vest and the large, the jacket and the XL. Mm -hmm. And if it gets cold and you got that on and you're still getting cold, you might not get to get your blood pressure checked. Yeah, and, and I think that's one thing that people will notice right away, especially when the July-August issue hits and they're able to see. that. That's kind of the first look. For some of, mm -hmm. for anyone really, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys are, will have it on your website and stuff. You bet. Um, but really, the first look to a, a large audience there that you'll notice that matte finish, mm -hmm. and that's that's what you're talking about, and it's a uh, that matte kind of finished face fabric that um, it doesn't. It's not real shiny or anything, but I think that'll that'll jump out to people because it's unique to. And you'll see that across the line on several other yeah outer outerwear garments that we have. Just that you know, again, camouflage print does great but if you can mat up you yeah, how many people here talk about taking their layout blinds and mudding them up oh yeah so it's kind of you've kind of automatically mudded it up yeah at no. first yeah we talk about that all the time along those same lines of you know when the, the temperatures do drop you guys have a new, a new hoodie and i know a lot of people don't think about that and you had just mentioned before we came on air like that's not your normal hoodie. No. so it's it's called it's the L lst silencer hoodie is what the actual name mm -hmm. of it. Uh, but kind of share what that thing yeah is. so that would be something that you would use um over a base layer mm -hmm. um maybe even a base layer and a light long sleeve shirt but it's really thick performance fleece 
wicks moisture very well, huge insulating properties. I forget what the number is, but super warm. That combined, 400 grams of 100% polyester fleece. Yeah, it's That's a su- lot. Sucker super warm. Yeah. But the best thing about it is even for as what we would call... You won't. I wouldn't call it heavy, mm-hmm. like a lot of the old, the old heavy cotton hoodies that we all love to oh, wear. Yeah. But it's light and flexible. You can move in it, and it's quiet and super, super warm. Um, one of our main product developed person, Justin Carper, and I were moving some decoys last year on a pretty chilly morning. It's kind of froze up a little bit, and he had his on about the first trip in and out. It was gone because sweat was dripping off yeah. his nose and out of his ears and everywhere else. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it also breathes well, too, because it's you know it's polyester fleece. So yep. it wicks moisture well, insulates well. It is just a super, super good. For the folks who like hoodies, it's awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of them out there. I mean, I think in our uh, new guns and gear issue, we have an entire category dedicated to just hoodies yes. this year, which is the first time I've ever done that. Oh, really? So it's kind of interesting yeah. that there's a lot of lot of different hoodies out there, and you see people rocking them. I mean, now, granted, there's some people who don't ever wear hoodies, but, right. but there's a lot of people that do. As far as hoodies go, it's, it is top shelf. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. Next category here is probably my favorite and the one that my wife wishes that I would give up this complete— I'm not even going to call it like a collection at this point, but it's bags. Mm. I'm a bag aficionado. Oh, I have, a bag nerd. I you? have backpacks and bags. Like uh, my co-host, Dr. Mike Brazier, asked me for a uh, waterproof backpack the other day. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I got one. But I'm technically, I'm using it as a pickleball bag right now for my pickleball paddle and balls. So I was like, all right, there man. And, ju- and it's just because I have so many bags. Mm-hmm. But these two new bags that you guys come out with this year, um, H&D Blind Bag. You know, awesome design, cool stuff, super durable. It's a it's a pretty good size bag. Mm-hmm. Um, so where did this kind of come from? Just kind of spin off one of the older bags, and you guys just kind of just took kind it of under a redesign. Kind of how can we make this more useful? And to your point, I think a lot of people, more so than we realize, dual purpose or repurpose these bags for other things besides oh, going absolutely. going to the duck blind or the goose blind mm-hmm. or whatever. You use it for, for your ball team. Mm-hmm. A lot of people use them for their turkey hunting gear. A lot of people use them for storage. If you're a pistol or rifle shooter, we use it to store magazines or ammo or whatnot in to go to the range. So there's a lot of ways to use these bags. We have several of them. Depending on what you like or how light you like to run or how mm-hmm. prepared you like to be, we've got something for everybody. And the newer stuff, it's been, again, pockets redesigned, make it a little bit more ergonomic, easier to get stuff in and out of and stay organized is kind of one of the big things we got going moving forward. Yeah, and the uh, the next bag you guys have is the Swamp Pack. Uh, and you guys have always had some, some really solid backpacks. Um, I've got probably... Or one of each one. Even the mon, you just have this huge monster bag that um, I ended up using it as a tackle bag for a period ah. of time. Um, it has since transitioned back to hunting gear, mm-hmm. but um, this one, the Swamp Pack, it's like one hundred percent waterproof. It's like they got the TPU bottom. You know, it is it is a waterfowler's pack. You know, and you can pack you extra clothes in there. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's something you keep in a boat. With that in mind, yeah, that you know, you get wet in the boat, hypothermia could be an issue. So, you know, pack you some extra things in there, use it for storage. If you're walking in, it's something you can pack everything but the kitchen sink in, yeah. you know, extra clothes, lunch, coffee bottles. It's all right there. It's big. It's roomy. I forget how many cubic inches of storage is in it, but it's big. Um, and again, I think of that piece as something to put. Extra change of clothes in, extra jacket, extra vest, something, you know, to help keep your core body heat up that you might put in the boat, cinch it up, put it up in the boat box yeah. that you might need it for down the road. But again, use it however you want to. It's cool that it is waterproof. If you're in the rain or something, it, it's it's going to keep everything dry. Yeah, and you said it's huge. It's it's pro- not as big as the one you're talking yeah. about, but it's probably, I don't know, probably 15, 16 inches wide by... Yeah maybe 24 inches yeah. tall. I don't know if did we have the dimensions. I don't on? have the dimensions right here, but, you know, and, and it also has like five main outer compartments that are, yes. you know, waterproof straps oh, yeah. as well. Put your thermoses, your, your Coke bottles, your water bottles, whatever you need. You got a place for it, put it, put it on your back and go, yeah. you know. No, and then, then that's awesome. And just being such a gearhead, I'm sitting here while you're talking, I'm thinking about, you know, oh, man, I wonder, like, do you bring... These recommendations, you know, you've been with Drake for a year now, and you now you're like you said, you're kind of learning how these processes work. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, do you bring some of that when you guys are having new product conversations? 
you know, are you like, yeah, man, that, that pocket will never work because it's not this. Or like you said, man, this pack, it's a, you know, swamp pack. It's a great backpack, but it's also like, this can be storage in a boat. Like, mm-hmm. this is your dry bag, mm-hmm. you know? Do you bring those kind of conversations in? Is that kind of your cup of tea? That's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. And there's some stuff that, that I may not use that mm-hmm. you might. And yeah. I always try to keep that in mind, too. You mm-hmm. know, what what's beneficial to everybody? Because we all use that stuff a little differently. Yeah. I can remember back in the day where I would tell folks, they'd ask me, say, man, we got room to put our bag anywhere? So if you can't keep it in your coat pocket, you don't need it. Yeah. And there's some truth to that, mm-hmm. but through time and think, man, it's nice to have extra stuff around. Oh, yeah. You know, have stuff where you can get to it. Um, I'm bad about toolboxes in my truck. Mm-hmm. Same thing in a boat. I keep a bag or a box with different stuff in it that that's where it stays, where um, – Plot, it, it's where our waterproof stuff really comes in hand because you don't want that stuff getting wet. Yeah. So w- tools, screwdrivers, whatever is right there in case you need it. You know, I always pack for that. If I'm hunting, I'm hunting light. But in the boat, it might be them extras that yeah. I'm going to need. Yeah, and there's always a time and a place for everything. I mean, I've, I've transitioned over the last probably 20 years to different bags. And what I've learned with myself is the bigger the bag that I get, the more crap that I'm going to bring. Mm-hmm. Like, next thing I know, I'm trying to pick up my blind bag, and it weighs, you mm-hmm. know, 70 pounds. Because I've, I've got... Now I've got six boxes of shells, but because I can fit them in there. Mm-hmm. Or I've got this extra thing that I don't need that I'm just like, oh, this will go in the bag. Mm-hmm. So I've kind of downsized them. Then I went real small, like you said. Like, if I can't get in my pockets, I don't need it. Mm-hmm. And then I realized that didn't work for me either because I got too much stuff. And so I've just continued to transition from bag to bag to where I've kind of found the middle ground, which is kind of where the H&D bag really fits. It's kind of a middle tier bag like, you as far as size it's not too big you can put it in a pit with you you take or you know put it in a boat with you then work work out of it if you're hunting slate public woods you know you keep your ammo or whatever in there odds and ends that you're going to need during the day but just work out of it you know get you two handfuls of shells and go if you shoot them up go back there and get some more so you're not carrying a trying to hide a big bag yep. but you can work out of it and that's i've kind of found traveling I'm bad when I go places. I like to drive because I got my truck. Yep. I've got my everything set up in my truck. I know what's where. That being said, I try to keep a bag put together that's kind of like what they call a bug out bag of, mm-hmm. of sorts to where there's a Leatherman in there. There's um, paracord in there. There'd be shells in there. There'd be odds and ends that I need. If I don't have my truck, I won't feel like I'm just totally left out. Yeah. So I'm, I try to put one of them together to keep if I have to swing in, hop in the truck with you. I'm going to try to grab grab that bag along with one of my others. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny you said that. I was just talking to somebody about that same thing where I always want to drive because I've, I know that I have like three extra headlamps under my back seat. Yeah. You know, I know that I have, I know where everything is. I get out. I've got my waiter straps. I got, everything goes in its spot. And as soon as I get in someone else's truck and go hunting, I'm lost. Mm-hmm. Just like, what? Where, where's this? Where's this? It's funny that you mentioned that. Oh, stuff we're... like that drives me mm-hmm. fruit. Yeah. I was in Montana, got to go to Montana turkey hunting this spring. And my first plan was to drive for that mm-hmm. re- very reason. I wound up because of timing. I had to fly. So I had to borrow a gun when I got out there because I didn't want to fly with my gun. And I tried to pack all my stuff, extra stuff in the tur- extra vest. Okay. What's, what's my basic needs? And what's what's the stuff I like to have just in case? So you're trying to get under that fifty pound and airline. try to be under yeah. that fifty pound bag limit, man. I I should come in at forty five. Yeah, uh, if I get if I get under forty eight, I'm doing something. Yeah, yeah, because I'm always I'm the same way. I, if I drive, even just going over to my camp, I'm bringing two pairs of waders. Oh, of course, I'll be over there for like three days. You well, know, I'm you like, might. well, you know, I might need another pair of waders. Something, you know, I've got two guns. I've got, you know, I've got double of everything mm-hmm. to make sure that if something, or if a buddy of mine shows up and says, "Hey, I forgot my gun," that's mm-hmm. happened before. Or, or how many times have you had a guest that's flying in, bag got lost, at the that's airport? Right. Well, here I can help you out, buddy. Got you I, an I'm, extra pair. I'm right there with you. I like to be that guy. Yeah, yeah. We, I try to be. Although with the bags, my wife laughs, and I have duffel bags. So I got to figure something out. That's that's the answer to that. Is I got to figure out how to get rid of some. Of this. Yeah, I'm. So, I got. I'm. I'm kind of somewhat a bag nerd too. I got all different sizes. Yeah, that's. Uh, we'll skip. We'll get away from the bags. We we'll probably talk about that all day. So the next one is McAllister. Mm-hmm. Heavy duty three in one jacket. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's pretty versatile as far as uh, before we came online. We were kind of talking about it, and I was like, man, that's a that's a heavy jacket. That'll yeah. be a great you know, late season jacket, but really you can strip that thing down 
You bet. It's a three in one. You, you can go. you can make it work for early season, mm -hmm. mid season, or late season. However you choose to use it, use each part of it separately or together. Yeah. And that's kind of the beauty of that kind of stuff is you can take this one jacket and use it in three different ways. Yeah. And you had the you had the uh, three in one. That's, yeah, that's not necessarily a, 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 anything new. Yeah, you had it with the Drake line, but this is the first three in one in, McAllister. In the line, that's you right. bet. Okay, in, in, cool. in a solid. And there's probably some people out there that may not know that McAllister is a Drake waterfowl product. That's correct. And, and all the all the McAllister stuff, the wax cotton stuff mm -hmm. that we're working on, um, it's like the old original McAllister stuff. Yeah. So it's it's the same designs. Um, we're trying to make them all a little better. You know, evolution being what it is, always trying to make things better. Yeah. Um, but it, it's the same old McAllister stuff. Yeah. I have a, guys, a couple guys that I hunt with have one of the old original Mm -hmm. McAllister jackets and they love it. Mm -hmm. you know, they're still they're going to have to get a new one eventually. They're wearing that thing out. Well, that that's that's cool about stuff like that is it's kind of like an heirloom that you wear all the time. Yeah. You know, and, and if you eventually wear one out, well, you've put it through the test, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing that you guys also have out is the new timber strap, mm -hmm. um, and I I still have one of the old timber straps, uh, but I noticed a couple new things with the new timber strap. Uh, you went to metal hooks, mm -hmm. which I think that. That was probably a no-brainer. Yeah, everybody broke those plastic mm -hmm. hooks, and and even metal hooks. You didn't want them to be too pointy. I mean, yep. how many times you try to get your gun off, and if you're using it's hung on there, yeah. you can't. God dang it, I can't get my gun. Those straps work really well. The shell pouch on there, you can put a box of shells in it. Um, you can hang your ducks on it. It's truly a good working tree strap for timber hunters. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and it's got the got the the duck strap so you know you can hang ducks if you need it mm -hmm. i mean I, th I think it's it's a good design it works good one thing and people see this in the magazine as well is the goose flag mm -hmm. uh, you guys have always had goose flags mm -hmm. but you guys just went back to the drawing board with this thing redid it uh the one that i think that we have in the magazine has old school camo on one side black on the other mm -hmm. have you used flags like that for specs or is that primarily, you know, for cannabis? I, I have I have not. That's typically a cannabis yep. thing. Although that being said, I don't know why it wouldn't work yeah. with specs. You I know, was just curious. I was thinking about that, you know. It, that's a great question. I, I'm you know, I don't know why it wouldn't. Yeah. So it's the same idea. You're trying to yeah. trying to use that mo natural looking motion to attract their attention. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Cool. Um, another thing we got you may not have is some new hard goods. We got a new duck stand coming out for a marsh stand type thing oh, where cool. you can that's gonna be really nice for a place to set your gun, mm -hmm. um, hang your shells, put your coffee, whatever. And that, if you hunt a buck brush slough or a willow break or even in, in the woods, sometimes there's not a tree where you want it to put your stuff yeah. on. This thing right here, you stick it in there. It's pretty heavy duty, um, but yet wouldn't take, don't take up much room in a boat, folds up nicely. It's something that I think everybody will use to keep in their toolbox for when they might need something like that. Yeah. And another thing, which you guys actually came up with last year, but you had touched on it on a phone call um, a couple weeks ago, you, the pit toppers. Mm -hmm. That's kind of unique. It's a very unique because, you know, not every region has pits like that. Um, but something that definitely caught my eye as, as a solution, especially with the guys that I hunt with, the area that I hunt in. These those pit toppers could be could be a game changer for some could, people. Could be, and I, a little story to that. So that same top we use on our what we call our ghillie blind, mm -hmm. um, and, and the the pit tops comes in I think a sixteen or twenty foot length. It might just be sixteen. I need to brush up on that. But here's what I'll say about it: went to Canada last fall, the first big hunt, and was using the ghillie blinds, mm -hmm. and I was concerned about how that was all going to work. Yeah. And I, made no bones about it. Yes, I don't know how this is going to work. Mm -hmm. You know, once I got it set up and got it hid and used it and the way that it folds and the way it flips up when you come up to shoot and the way it hides, we had, we had birds, of course we're in Canada, but tried it again at home. We had birds lighting dang near on top of us, mm -hmm. you know, cause taking away that black hole from the top of a pit, yeah. top of a layout blind, whatever it may be, you eliminate that black hole yet. You can still watch birds and see the show. I was, extremely impressed with how well it worked in a hunting situation. Yeah. No, that's cool. So you, you apply that same technology back to you just buy the pit lid and you know, you, you won't take it off during when duck season's over, you're going to go put it up somewhere. Yep. You're not going to leave it on the pit all mm -hmm. summer long, but it can be a game changer once you make it, once you get it set right and it can open from either side and you take how many times have you ever gone flying over duck country and mm -hmm. even a roll top? Yeah. What's the first thing you see? That little the thin strip black, black line. Yep. You see it from a mile away. Mm -hmm. You take all that stuff away. 
Yeah. Um, and that's that's the beauty of that pit lead. And, th- and that's one thing to touch on. The the realities, you know, when you said, have you ever been flying over duck country? Well, I never, I mean, I have flown over duck country, but not not recently in an airplane. But really, with technology now, everybody's got a drone. Oh, yeah. You know, so Same I've, I've flown drones all over where yeah. our farm is really to look at our pits. Same difference. And to see what, like, and you can look down, you're like, that looks awful. You know, I, like, I, some of the places awful. I've seen, it makes me wonder how we even shoot a duck. I know. Like, why did a duck fall for that? Y- yeah, how do how'd we do that? But that's definitely a solution. A lot in this region, you know, there's probably a lot more pits than other places. I don't know. Out west, there's quite a few. California, they, they hunt from pits as well. Um, but that, we have battled that for 10 years. Mm-hmm. You know, do you want a roll top? We've got, you know, do you want a flip, flip top, top, the A-frame looking flip top that we've just struggled finding the right solution. So I'm excited to see that. And see there's that product. a debate on all of it. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, we try to help build tools to add to the duck hunters toolbox mm-hmm. to help them be more successful. But I like to think of that as tools. Yeah. You know, you might not use the same tool for every application. So you may try something else in a different application. So that's kind of the way I like to think of things. What, what all am I going to need for all the different things I'm going to do this year? If I only do one thing, if I only go to the woods every day, well, I don't need as many tools, yeah. right? But although that's my favorite, I do more than just that. Yeah. So oh, yeah. um, you got to be prepared for it. So, Jim, you had a couple more products that that you really wanted to kind of touch on before we get off here. Go ahead and just kind of talk about those different new Drake products that, that really yeah. jump out to one, one that comes to mind is we got a dog stand this year. It's going to mm-hmm. be pretty handy for guy, whether you hunt in the woods or hunt in the field. Um, it's a nice fold-up dog stand. You can adjust the height of it, adjust the level for the water depth. Mm-hmm. Um, you can put a blind on top of it, put your dog in the blind, or if you're in the woods, you can just build cover over the top of it. It's going to be be a good piece. Yeah. Um, there's, there's others like it. We've got our own twist to it. I think people will enjoy that dog blind. It's going to the, the new field blind field house. I forget the exact name. Mm-hmm. Um, I deal with what the product is instead of the names yeah. of it, which is bad on me. I'll, I'll get chastised for that down the road. But <laughs> um, just be looking for the new n- new dog blinds. I think people enjoy them. All the new hard goods is kind of getting a redesign. Again, they're different tools to add to your duck hunting, goose hunting toolbox. But there's there's some nice stuff coming there for sure. Cool. That's exciting. And I know, you know, one of the biggest things that we talk about, you know, this time of year, and I know that you really have your kind of ear to the ground of this as well. Obviously, you did the BPOP survey shows with Mike Brazier mm-hmm. uh, last year. You know, are, are you getting, do you get questions from people like, hey, have you heard anything about duck numbers? Have you heard anything about this? Like, how, what what kind of feedback or really questions are you getting? Just because, you know, you, you kind of, you have a, a pretty big audience, especially in social. Um, are you getting a lot of that? It's starting to. Yeah. You know, I do get it throughout the course of the year, but it's funny how things change. Mm-hmm. You know, so as I mentioned earlier, my other passion, hunting passion, is turkey hunting. So, you know, we just, during duck season, you're talking about turkey hunting. You know, you get closer into duck season, talking about turkey season. As you get closer to the end of turkey season, in the summer, we're talking duck hunting. So we're in that time frame right now, mid-May. You know, we're thinking about the May pond counts coming up, and, and I'm starting, everybody's gears are starting to switch a little yep. bit to, to what are ducks doing. But I always get people ask, hey, Jimbo, what are you hearing about duck numbers? What's duck population looks like? Are there going to be any ducks this year? You know, um, I can't, I don't have my own personal crystal ball, so mm-hmm. I kind of listen to a lot of other yeah. folks but kind of from what i'm here and talking to folks from here ducks Unlo- ducks unlimited fish and wildlife different game fish folks it sounds like maybe things could be at least the same as last year maybe yeah. in some places a little better i was just in my eastern montana a couple of weeks ago, um, turkey hunting, but we're in the prairie pothole region there and there was, you know, I've seen mitered pears and pintail pears. Mm-hmm. Grass was short, a lot of places, kind of concerning. You could tell the water wasn't up, you know, flooded into those pastures, yeah. but you could also tell there wasn't a big mud flat to the mm-hmm. edge of the water. So things had come back and talking to the locals, they said, yeah, it's been bad dry. We're just getting enough rain to get some of these things kind of at least to this level right here in full. So they're, they're talking to duck hunters, said, things are looking better yep. here. Um, than, than they have been in some time. I know the Dakotas have gotten pretty good moisture lately. Oh, yeah. Up into Manitoba and parts of Saskatchewan have. I don't know what that's going to mean. We'll find mm-hmm. out in another 
what's it about another month we'll have yeah. an idea of what things are looking like and then hopefully mike and i can do the same thing we did last yeah. year kind yeah, of discuss all that we definitely you? do and we talked about this before you came on air it's that time now you did mention you'd go from turkey hunting mindset to hunting at the ducks unlimited podcast we only have one mindset so we stick on with ducks and geese oh, year around okay. no, i'm just kidding gotcha. <laughs> but uh but you talked about this earlier where you notice when you were with Rich and Tone and you noticed even when you were guiding and now even especially with Drake, you noticed that that July time frame kicks in and you start, you know, duck hunters start looking at duck hunting. Gear. Oh, yeah. It's, that, it's just that change, that mentality. The four, I, I, I've said it before and I kind of got away from it and then I've seen it again. Fourth of July, the Monday... If, if for, let's just say for conversation purpose, I think this year it hits during the middle of the week. But let's say 4th of July is on a Friday, and we have 4th of July weekend. Everybody has a big time. We're cooking and having fun and doing all the things you do on 4th of July. I think everybody gets around and talks about duck season. And I can remember being in the guide business. My phone would start ringing on Monday, people talking about booking hunts. And as I grew more into the general outdoor industry, you see the same thing happening. That's when people like to ship catalogs. That's the beginning, you know, beginning of quarter three, all the new hunting shows start coming out. Magazines coming out with fall products. Everybody starts thinking fall. So I have come to the conclusion that duck season starts the Ju- first July 5th. Th- July 5th. Yeah. Pretty much when duck season starts. And if you think about it from um, a hunting club or getting stuff ready thing. All right, we're so you're already into the first week of July. So you're say six weeks from there, you're getting close to the first of September, right? You're getting plump all the way through August. You're coming close to fall and dove season opening. The uh, northern tier states have early goose seasons opening oh, early yeah. September, and the northern tier states regular duck season is going to start late in September. So really even at home here, if you if you got a duck club to get ready and you got woods to get ready and you got blinds to brush and you got things to do, you need to start getting organized after the fourth of July. But if you got a boat, get you if you duck boat, you've been water skiing and fishing all summer, start thinking about getting your boats ready. Start getting uh, what do I need do I need ammo? Do I need clothes? Um, I seen them new Drake waiters and look pretty cool. I need to order a pair <laughs> yeah. of them. Um, you start thinking about that because i it'll bite you in the butt yeah um and if you're planning any early fall trips you think okay i'm going to canada in late september october well that time frame is going to come out of your get ready time the more you can do to get ready starting after the fourth that's reasonable yeah you'll be better off for it because there's nothing worse than going into duck season having to act like you're killing snakes up all night rigging decoys that being said I do it every I've year. I've done it. Yeah, do I did it, it every last. Year. Pumping pits and yeah, yeah, it was disaster. We didn't, we didn't get our decoys in until the day before duck season or two days before duck season. So everybody's outside trying to get decoys tied and set decoys. I don't necessarily like have to do that. Yeah. Um, but I always wind up doing it. So I figure the more I talk about getting started early. The more you're going to motivate yourself. The more I'm going to motivate yourself yeah. to be done. Um, so I always appreciate some of the managers that that's getting it. You know, it might be 100 degrees and dry mm-hmm. and a popcorn fart, but thinking duck season's coming, it's going to rain again, it's going to get colder, it's going to change, get it done now. Yeah. No, I mean, that's that's kind of how the I am. After 4th of July, you know, I'm not a big hot weather guy. I say that living in Memphis, so that's not good, but... Once after the 4th of July, maybe middle of July, I'm about done with summer. Yeah. I you know, think I'm most like, folks all are. All right. All right. We've, we've had a good time swimming yeah. and doing yeah. all this. Uh, but I think that's not that's not just me. That's like you said, a lot of folks, you know, especially duck hunters, hunters in general, you start transitioning. But the reality is by the time you hit August, man, it's, it's coming. coming. It's, it's coming, coming quick, fast. buddy. Yeah. Faster than you think it is. That's right. I, I, I think what myself, I get to think, well, gosh dang, it's 105 in the shade. It ain't time to do all that stuff. Well, yeah, it is. Because if you wait, it's not going to wait on you, buddy. Mm-mm. Nope, it'll be here. And then we're always trying to do, you know, you end up on a teal hunt in Louisiana or Texas. Mm-hmm. And those, so you got five days out in September. And, you know, by the time October hits, you know, you got... But if you're going to bow hunt any at all, yeah, if that's, you're something, do anything if that's else, something you do. Yeah, you're going to eat up time. So it's better to go ahead and take advantage of some of those hot days where you're not doing anything anyway. And, right. And cleaning decoys, stuff like that. Get we talked about a lot of that. Yeah. Yep. No, that's cool. Well, Jimbo, this has been awesome. Um, appreciate you coming on. Thanks for sharing all the information about Drake's new products. I know we're excited about it. Um, you know, as an official partner of Ducks Unlimited, it means a lot for us, means a lot for you guys. And, man, we better start getting ready. You bet. I appreciate you giving me time to start talking about it. 
Cool. All good. I'd like to thank my guest, Jimbo Ronquist, for joining me on the show today and talking about some of Drake's new products, talking about made the possibility of duck numbers. You know, we kind of just covered the gamut there. I'd like to thank our producer, Chris Isaac, for putting the show together and getting it out to you. And I'd like to thank you, the listener, for joining us on the DU Podcast and supporting wetlands conservation. Thank you for listening to this episode of the DU Podcast. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show. And visit www.ducks.org slash DU Podcast for resources based on today's topics, as well as access to more episodes. Opinions expressed by guests do not necessarily reflect those of Ducks Unlimited. Until next time, stay tuned to the Ducks. Stay tuned to the Ducks. Stay tuned to the Ducks.